Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Ask Huda. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi wa kafa, wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa, la siyama al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. My dear viewers, let me quickly remind you with our phone numbers and the contact informations. Should you have any question, you can dial any of the following numbers, beginning with the area code 002, then 01, 09518-5170. Alternatively, area code 002, then 01-005469323. And the WhatsApp numbers for free calls, area code 001-347-806-0025. And finally, another WhatsApp number, area code 001-361-489-1503. Without any further ado, we already have some callers. Sister Khadija from the USA, welcome to Ask Koda. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Sheikh. Jazakallah khairan. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine. And you? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. One regarding my mother-in-law who passed away recently. Um, she always had a wish that she wanted to build a masjid. Mm -hmm. But uh, since she's no more, uh, her kids, the money they got from her, they, they want to use that money to make her wish come true, build a masjid for her. Can they do that? Okay. Your second question, Khadija? Oh, the second question is, after she passed away, her sister, she missed her so much that she cries all the time. But what we heard after three days, we're not supposed to cry so much by missing the disease. So uh, is, is she allowed to do that, mourn that way? All right. Thank you, Sister Khadija from the USA. First of all, may Allah have mercy on your mother-in-law and admit her to the gardens of paradise. May he make her grave a garden of heaven. Amen. Um, secondly, she wanted to build a masjid whenever she was alive. And now she passed away and she didn't get to fulfill her wish. Perhaps she didn't have enough means. Anyway, when she died, uh, the family members, they said, Let's take the inheritance and instead of uh, taking it for ourselves, we invest it in building a masjid. This is one of the greatest thing that you can do for her. Where the money will be deposited in a project which is considered sadaqatun jariya, a continuous charity. Secondly, you and your mother, the ears and the woman who passed away, everybody will be rewarded by the grace of Allah. The reward is simply as the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, in return, Allah will build a house for you in paradise. So Allah will build a house for your mother-in-law in paradise and for you as well. Because you have spent now, it has become your money. You are donating or contributing or spending your money actually towards giving an act of continuous charity to benefit your late mother. Such a great deed, mashallah, la quwata illa billah. What if the money that we have or what she left in addition to what we're willing to give away isn't enough to build an entire masjid on our own? It doesn't matter. Find a project or a masjid under construction and say, I'm going to buy the steel. I'm going to make uh, the, the foundation. I'm going to furnish the whatever. So because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even if your contribution in building a masjid was so little, as little as a building what looks like a bird's nest still Allah will build a house for you in paradise Assalamu alaikum Mahboob from Bangladesh Assalamu alaikum um, My question is is the reward for Laylatul Qadr only at night 
So in the sense that if, 29, if 27th is the night of Qadr, then do we get the rewards only that night or even in the morning? Or is it just from Maghrib till Fajr? Okay, got your question. Khadija also asked about, you know, crying beyond three days. Is it forbidden? Would one get sick? Uh, would Allah be angry with the person? Let me explain. Crying, we don't induce crying. We're not acting. After several months of losing my father, every time I remember him, whether in the prayer or when I visit his grave, when I'm reading Quran, when I'm sitting on his bed, I simply cry and I cannot control myself. I cry from my heart. While driving, I cry. There is nothing wrong with that. As long as this, your tongue doesn't say a word of objection. As long as your heart recognizes that inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We all belong to Allah and unto Him we shall return. But the mourning of the death of anyone should not be beyond three days. Except the wife, she should mourn the death of her husband four months and ten days. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Baqarah. So, you know, we're not really celebrating or we're not attending parties or not attending weddings because I feel sorry for the loss of my brother or father or whatever. Uh, but crying, you may feel that you want to cry because you're missing any person whom you liked or you loved months after his death. This is something, this is mercy that Allah the Almighty has instilled in the heart. Barakallahu feekum. Mahboob from uh, Bangladesh. Let's take Aisha first, then I will answer. Sister Aisha from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I believe it is 6 p.m. your time, uh, Aisha, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, first of all, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I, I think it's midnight over there and for your effort. Uh, Sheikh, I had uh, three questions. Um, so my first question is, uh, my father, before he passed away, uh, he was sick for over 15 years. And every Ramadan, my siblings would um, give the fidya in cash on behalf of him. Uh, so the, the question is, is, is this, does this count uh, as feeding one meal for each day he missed? Or should we start calculating his missed fasting again and uh, do it the right way and feed uh, poor? And if so, um, can we give the money to an organization who does this? My uh, second question is, um, I woke up after sunrise and uh, took puzzle and didn't eat or drink. But before, um, the, before that, the, the night before, I didn't uh, make any intention because I wasn't sure if I uh, was done with my menses or not. Uh, but that day I fasted and took puzzle. So does that count or should I, uh, should I, I should have um, made the knee uh, uh, the night before that I would take puzzle and uh, uh, fast uh, morning sister um, sister Aisha wait a minute your second question is very important so it needs a clarification your menses was over and uh, you didn't take ghusl this is something that has nothing to do with fasting because even if you didn't take ghusl until it was past fajr but the intention of fasting is not contingent on performing ghusl once your period is over Khalas, taking ghusl is in order to be able to pray. But it is not required to be in a state of tahara or perform ghusl to make an intention to fast. Okay, another thing. If your period is over and you say, Alhamdulillah, maybe in an hour or two I'll perform ghusl and after suhoor because I'm fasting tomorrow. That is the niyyah. I don't have to write it down. I don't have to declare it vocally. Your third question, please. Um, um, my third question, my nephew is about 11 years old and he has difficulty remembering surahs. So um, his mom uh, uh, makes him stand beside her and uh, so that way she can read 
the prayer a bit loud and she uh, he could repeat after him uh, i want to know if this is okay how old uh, is or he? should he just how old is he years old I 11 years old 11 okay um, I will answer uh, your remaining two questions, insha'Allah, Aisha, shortly. Uh, but if I can request the callers to just give me 30 seconds, quickly. So, Aisha, Allah, the Almighty, said in Surah Al-Baqarah 185, uh, That's one eighty-four. Okay, chapter number two. So those who cannot afford fasting, according to the meaning, the general meaning of the ayah, without going into the reason of the revelation and the graduality of the uh, legislation, in brief, if somebody due to old age or disability or chronic diseases, they cannot fast at all. In this case, the fidya, Allah said, fidyatun ta'amu. What is the word ta'am means? Eating mam feeding, to feed a miskin, a poor person, per each day. He didn't say you give him money. You didn't give him five bucks. It doesn't count. So giving somebody money and say, go and buy a meal, that doesn't count. Allah said feeding. So in this case, it must, in this case, it must be given to poor. Equal number of the days. So if every day feed the same person, 29 days, that counts. If I throw a uh, dinner and I uh, invite 29 people all at once and they eat, Alhamdulillah, the fidya is done. If I pay the money to a person or an organization in order to buy or prepare the meals and distribute it upon the, mis the masakin, that too counts. But giving cash to a person and say, this is fidya, you go ahead and uh, do whatever with the money, Allah didn't say so. Uh, finally, if the person, the child reached the age of puberty, then he's not allowed to pray as a ma'moom while the imam is a woman. Rather, he should be the imam. Okay, and we need to be patient with him until he learns al-fatiha and qulhu wallahu ahad, which is not much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mahdi from Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What time is it in Bangladesh now, Mahdi? Uh, it's uh, just Fajr time. Fajr time, mashallah. So you had your sahur meal already, alhamdulillah, correct? Yes. Okay, go yes, ahead, yes. Mahdi. What is your question? Okay, Sheikh. Uh, few days ago, uh, maybe in 9th Ramadan, I asked a question about uh, investment loans. And you replied that if they if, if they, uh, take uh, the loss and uh, profit both, then it's okay. Uh, now my question is, what this does is that uh, if you have major loss, they uh, take the loss like a fifty or sixty percent level. Uh, they because it in most agriculture business and stuff, it's hard to calculate the exact amount of loss. If you have major loss, they take 50 to 70 percent of the loss uh, in those investment loans. So, in that case, uh, what is the ruling? And Look, my yeah, another question is Akhi Mahdi, in brief, if you want to make the contract halal 100 percent, if I say I get 10 percent of the profit, 15 percent of the profit, 25 percent of the profit, then similar to that, I get up the loss. 25% of the profit, then in case there is a loss, I will encounter 25% of the loss. This which will make it lawful. Otherwise, when I give somebody money and I say, invest it for me. But in case you lose, then you write me a check. You have to pay me the same money back, the capital sum. Then this is a loan with interest, riba. Your second question, Mahdi. Uh, uh, my second question is if... Uh, most of the... Uh, uh, the corporations here uh, do business with uh, taking loans from banks or uh, you know, give, uh, giving keeping money in the banks. So that includes riba. So is it okay for me as a graduate to work in these corporations 
it can be a manufacturing company or a industry or something. Yes, anything. it is permissible for you because you're doing a job and you're getting a salary for the job has nothing to do with them saving the money in the bank or taking a loan with paying interest because your job is totally different. You're not working in a bank. You're working in a factory. And the owners of the factory bought the machines, the equipments from a bank loan when they pay Riva. This is none of your business. You're not blameworthy. You're earning lawfully because you are producing lawful products. Thank you, Mahdi. Mahbu from Bangladesh asked about Laylatul Qadr. And uh, there are similar questions about when is Laylatul Qadr. He said the 27th, is it only the night or also the day? And this is a very valuable question. Allah the Almighty says about Laylatul Qadr, He, number one in Surah al dukhan He said, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka. Indeed, we have sent down the Qur'an on a blessed night. Inna kunna munzirin. In Surah Al-Qadr, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. The word layla means night. And the night begins from sunset till dawn. Alhamdulillah. Then Allah the Almighty said in the same Surah, Salamun hiya hatta matala'il fajr. It's a peaceful night because the angels fill the earth throughout the night until Fajr, then after Fajr it is over. So the question is, is the Ibadah only prescribed during the night time or the daytime as well? Anyway, during the daytime, more fasting throughout the whole month of Ramadan. We're reciting our Quran and we're reciting our Adhkar. Cool. What happens at night? Most people, they eat, they drink their Dudba tea or coffee and then they relax. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ He who will stand up in prayer throughout the night of Laylatul Qadr, which we don't know for sure, when will it be? Our brother Shaheed al-Islam says, when will it be this year? From Bangladesh again. Every year we're not sure. For certain, which night will it be? We know that it is one of the last ten nights. You want to witness Laylatul Qadr and you want to earn its reward and you want to get a certificate that will be free from hellfire beginning from tomorrow night until the night of Eid. Every night, no sleep. You pray Isha in Jama'ah, Maghrib in Jama'ah. You eat your breakfast, then Isha in Jama'ah. If the masjid is open, if not, then with your family at home. Then you pray Taraweeh in Jama'ah or not, then you pray it by yourself at home. And you keep praying or reading Quran or reciting Adhkar or making Istighfar till the time of Suhoor. You eat your Suhoor meal, then you pray Fajr. Then you're a winner. You have witnessed Laylat al-Qadr, no doubt. No questions should be asked anymore about when is Laylat al-Qadr? this year it is beginning from tomorrow night sunset on sunday it will be the night of the 21st of ramadan all the way every night until the end of ramadan assalamu alaikum rubina from germany assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sister rubina welcome to ask with Thank you so much. Um, I have one question uh, about different types of khatam in Islam, mm. uh, like some Allah's names, uh, surahs, and Quran khatam. Uh, here, my um, relatives asked me that I should take a part with her in khatam uh, ar Rahman. Uh, they say the name of Allah 20,000, and uh, they say that I should take a part with her, but I hear that. If that's not allowed in Islam, it's bidah. Um, yet I'm not sure, is it bidah? Should I... Look, Sister Rubina, thank you for asking this very important question. You know what is funny and sad, meanwhile? We as Muslims, we travel from our whatever society or culture, and we take our package of cultural practices with us to Germany, to Europe, to North America, to Latin America, to Japan. Like, you know, we're teaching the new Muslims bunch of innovations. It's very simple. 
there is only one khatm which is khatmul Quran if you read it from cover to cover on your own or listen to it from cover to cover on your own but when somebody says let's do khatm and he gives me one para or you say your share is to recite uh, the 27th part of the Quran okay I recited the 27th part of the Quran then what you just recited one part of the Quran Okay, your share is to recite Surah Al-Rahman. I did recite it. So I just recited Surah Al-Rahman. How can a person believe that we did khatm when everyone recited something different? Then it happened that 30 people sat and they recited each one, one para. <claps> MashaAllah recited the whole Quran. You recited whatever you recited only. Or whatever you listened to attentively only. Then Asma'ullah al-Husna in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah the Almighty says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَاءِ To Allah belong the beautiful names, so invoke Him via His names. Use them as means of approach or wasila. How many times should I recite, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman? Well, I like to recite it a thousand, two thousand, twenty thousand, okay. Then when we say, you guys, let's make twenty thousand times khatmul uh, ism or reciting the names of Allah uh, on this blessed night, so we get together to recite a certain number of times, we say no. Why not? Because now you are introducing a new prescription. I would only say yes if I know that the Prophet Sallallahu said on Wednesday you get together and you recite uh, the name of Allah, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, 1,000 times, then your dua will be accepted. If there is no reference, then I'm not listening to you. I will recite, I will hold my tasbih or recite by my heart, and I would invoke the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all, 100, 1,000, 10,000 times, it doesn't matter. All it becomes problematic, and it becomes an innovation when you say, okay, everyone is, should recite it that many number of times. Or to add, if you recite this name 700 times, then you ask Allah for your need, it will be delivered. Fake. There is no such reference. You may recite it only once. You may raise your hand and say, Ya Afu, Ya Ghafoor, pardon me and forgive me my sins. Look what Aisha radiallahu anha learned from Liru Aisha. She was little back then. She said, Ya Rasulullah, if I know, if I sense, if I find out Laylatul Qadr is tonight, what am I supposed to do? Aisha, the Prophet's wife, 1450 years ago, he said, Ya Aisha, you should say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. How many times he didn't specify? So if I make it a thousand times, is it good? Yeah. If I make it two or three, it would be only bad if Sheikh Muhammad said, you guys tonight want to make 20,000 times Everyone let him or her do it as many times as they can afford. Barakallahu feekum. Farooq from Sweden. Assalamu alaikum. Naam, ya Farooq. Yes, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Farooq. My question is about the witr prayer. If it is allowed to do to al khunut when you're not praying in congregation, so you're praying alone. And if you're praying in congregation, what is wrong with that, Farooq? I mean, in 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 a pose of praying in congregation. I mean, if you're not praying in congregation, if you're praying alone, basically, what is the ruling on doing the dua to qunut? Same. It's sunnah to recite the qunut, which means the supplication upon rising up from ruku' or before going for ruku' on the last rak'ah, which is known as the witr prayer. It's sunnah. So whether in congregational prayer or by yourself in the witr prayer, it's sunnah to recite the Dua, which is called Qunut. Allahumma hadini fi man hadayt wa afini fi man afayt. But if you're praying as an Imam, then you're not supposed, you're forbidden to recite in the first person. Like you say, you're an Imam, say, Allahumma hadini fi man hadayt. That's not permissible. 
Why? Because you're not using all these guys behind you to pray for you. You're supposed to say, Ihdina. Okay? Plural. Guide us. Okay? Aafina. Pardon us. And so on. But whether jama'a or by yourself, it's simply sunnah to recite the qunut in the wut, not only at Ramadan, but on every single night. Assalamu alaikum. Gainul from Belgium. Assalamu alaikum. Jainul. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but the sound is broken. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perhaps you're using a speakerphone. That's why it's making a static or an echo. Can you turn the speakerphone off? Uh, yeah, talk from the handset. Is it, is it okay now? Oh, I'll do my best to uh, to hear you. Go ahead, I'll try. Uh, may Allah hear you and Huda TV and me and all the viewers as well. I heard that very well, alhamdulillah. And I say, ameen, Jainul, uh, and same to you. Yes. Uh, Sheikh, uh, can I ask two questions? Yes. Uh, the first question would be, uh, 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 which way I go, but I failed to make you understand. The question was, there is a quotation. The quotation is, if we wish good for others, things come back to us, the law of, this is the law of nature. Okay. Is this statement valid? Your second question, if you have any. And the second question is, uh, uh, to ruling on buying the French product now, is it permissible to buy any French product? All right. All right. Thank you, uh, Jainu from Belgium. Uh, may take a city from Germany, then I get back to answer your question, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum, city from Germany. Alaikum salam, Sheikh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing fine, and you? Alhamdulillah. Um, Sheikh, my question is, um, can a person make for in sujood and before salam, so many do as as he wills, or is it there a, like a time limit, especially if he leads a, a prayer in con congregation? Well, if you're praying by yourself, there is no time limit. Invoke Allah as much as you want. If you're praying in congregation, you gotta keep in mind that there are people behind you who might not be willing to stay or pause that long. So you should go with the average person, okay? Thank you, uh, city from Germany. Jainu from uh, Belgium. He's asking about the statement which says the law of measure, if you wish well for somebody, the wish turns around to benefit you as well. This is in the Sunnah. There is a hadith in which the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, whenever you pray for somebody in his or her absence, and that is in Arabic known as bidahri al ghaib they are not around you, which means you're really praying for them sincerely. You're not making them to bluff them or to please them or to get a point. No, they are not around you and you are sincerely asking Allah to bless them, to enrich them, to get them married, to have children, to cure them if they're sick, whatever. So the Almighty Allah will appoint a malak, an angel next to you. He too would keep saying, Ameen, Ameen, O oh Allah, accept his dua, please. And furthermore, give him similar to that. Whatever you're wishing for others, the angel would say, O oh Allah, give him similar to that. I do not buy any French products because they declare war against Muslims in France. They are making their life tough and miserable. They attack many masajid and they shut them down. They are confiscating the human rights of Muslims, banning them from sisters from wearing hijab or even dropping their kids to school while the mother is wearing hijab. This is completely racial profiling and we as Muslims perceive it as a war against Islam. So I ain't giving them a penny under any circumstances. 
not before they do apologize and they recognize that Muslims also have similar rights to everyone in their country. Brothers and sisters, it's time to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Callers from the USA or North America uh, or even from Europe, WhatsApp numbers should appear on the bottom of the screen with the area code 001 347 806 0025. And the other WhatsApp number is area code 001-361-489-1503. Um, where is D from the USA? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Welcome to Ask Who the Rizdi. Yeah, so Sheikh, I have uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first question is about the Petra. So I can see like, you know, the, um, you know, uh, Petra in US is like around $10 per person. But so, uh, my question is that, is that possible if I want to pay my Petra uh, in Bangladesh? Like, you know, so I have family members in Bangladesh. If I want to pay the Petra in back to Bangladesh, is that uh, permissible? Or do I have to pay the Petra in USA? You know, why, why I exactly live? And uh, my... Second question is related with the zakat. So I recently got a job, and uh, from the job I got uh, uh, RSU, which is called restricted uh, stock unit. So I want to know, like, what the uh, you know rules in Islam to pay zakat on RSU, and also the what the rules are to pay zakat on 401k. Jazakallah uh, khair. Thank you, Rizbi from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Mariam from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, Mariam. Wa alaikum assalam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Welcome to Ask Wada. Thank you, Sheikh. I have three questions. Um, so the first one is I want to help pay off my brother's debt. Mm -hmm. um, but however, the amount he needs to pay off his debt is more than my zakat. Mm -hmm. So is it permissible for me to give him this bulk amount that he owes? Um, as a one time payment, and I would calculate it as an advance of paying my zakat for the coming years. And, um, yeah, can, I'm sorry, can you? Your second question. Okay. Um, how do you respond to non Muslims who say that God is not good because if he was, uh, if he was good and just, then how do you justify a young man dying from COVID or something? and leaving behind a young wife and children with nobody to look after them. And mm -hmm. my last question is, is there a dua to make to witness Laylatul Qadr, like we say, Allahumma balikhna Ramadan? All right. So, yes, there is a dua, and inshallah, I will answer you, Sister Mariam, shortly, but after I take Rizbi's questions uh, from the USA. Generally speaking, it is permissible to transfer or send your zakah money abroad. If in your local community, people are well off and we don't have that many poor or we don't have any poor people. So can I send it to my family in Bangladesh or the villages where we have refugee camps for the Burmese? Of course, it would be more worthy. And that applies to zakat al-fitr as well. But behold, in the case of Zakat al Fitr, I cannot postpone its payment until after Salat al Eid. That's why, if I'm going to send it to Bangladesh and you're living in the USA, either you phone somebody and say, Well, my Zakat this year is about 100 bucks. This is, you know, my family members. I think my Zakat is approximately 100 bucks. So, would you please buy food and give it to the needy people in Bangladesh? before the Eid prayer, that counts. Likewise, in the case of Zakat al-Mal, we don't have poor people in our local community, um, but we have people in Syria, in Palestine, in Kashmir, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Yemen. They're more worthy. 
If you know some people, you give them the money in their hands or wire the money to them so that they can buy food and help the people who are in need, fine. Not in any of the trustworthy non-profit organizations. And once you make the payment, alhamdulillah, you're cool, you're done. Uh, Sister Mariam from uh, Canada asked also about paying the zakah towards settling the debt of her brother. It's permissible even if the debt is larger than your zakah, provided I have to investigate. In the first place, is my brother eligible to receive zakah? Yani, is he poor? Or he took a loan because he wanted to buy a house uh, on the lake? then I cannot give him the zakah money. Or he take a loan for, number one, I gotta verify the loan was taken for a legitimate cause, a halal thing. And number two, that poor man, he's out of job or he has a job, but he's living hand to mouth. He cannot afford to pay his debt because we don't give zakah or money to everyone who's alone. Multi-millionaires borrow money from the banks in order to run their business. So, what determines whether your brother or anyone else is eligible for your zakah or not, that he is faqir or miskin. He is in need. He is a poor and a needy person. Well, in this case, if my zakah is $10,000 and my poor brother is that is 50, mashallah, give him the 10,000 and alhamdulillah, that counts. Barakallahu feekum. Every night from now on we say Allahumma ballighna Laylat al-Qadr oh Allah enable us to witness Laylat al-Qadr then we also say wa wafiqna and grant us tawfiq and success to benefit out of it Labi from the USA Al-Ameen from USA Assalamu alaikum Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa rakat shiya Welcome to Ask Wada How are you? Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah Go ahead uh, Sheikh, here in the States, the government is giving a loan for the self-employed people mm. due to COVID. But when you for, fill the form, you sign that if you are told to get to pay the money, you should pay the interest. But it is forgivable money. But it, it is for what? Forgivable. Oh, it is pardoned. For, forgivable loan. Yeah. Oh, but if you are told to pay it, you will pay an interest. So if it is pardoned, why would I give it back anyway? Uh, that's what the form says. If, uh, maybe if you make any mistakes when you fill the form and you are told mm. to pay yeah, the I mean, money back. I mean, then... I mean, I would appreciate if you can uh, take a copy of the form and send it to the same WhatsApp number that you uh, called on. I'd like to see the form. But if the government is giving loans, is giving welfare, is assisting businesses, small or large, because of the lockdown and the COVID-19, and I'm not paying any interest, enjoy it. It's 100% lawful. Barakallah feek. Amin from USA. Hassan from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, brother Hassan. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, akhi. Thank you for asking. What time is it now? I believe it is 11.43 in the UK PM? It is, yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay, go ahead, Hassan. So, Sheikh, I want to know about um, the last 10 nights, Lady of God, obviously we are highly recommended to pray more and do more Salah, voluntary Salah and Dua. With the Dua, what I want to know is how should that be done? Should that be done in in when you read voluntary Salah or... For example, if I read two rakat, after two rakat, I put my hands together and do dua, read another two rakat, and then do dua. Or should the dua be in the actual salah itself? Because um, I can read Arabic, but uh, there's some duas which I know are very beneficial, but I don't know them by memory. So, if you understand my point. Brother that... Hassan, your question doesn't only concern you, it concerns all the viewers. So hang on, please. All what you said is permissible. Yani, I pray two rakas and in my sujood I supplicate. Between uh, the tashahud and tasdeem I supplicate, great. 
Then after I pray, I pause and I keep making dua outside the namaz, outside the actual prayer. Permissible, no problem. Uh, I spend between the prayers 20 minutes just to make zikr and dua or recite a few ayahs of the Quran, take a break while drinking some coffee or grabbing some snacks and then I make dua, enjoy it. All of that is permissible. And since I can read Arabic, that is not sufficient to make you make the dua in Arabic because guess what? I need to understand what I'm invoking Allah with, what I'm saying. And in addition to, there are a lot of things I have in mind. I want to ask from Allah on this blessed night. I don't know how to ask it in Arabic. Ask it in Urdu, in French, in, the, in, in, in Hindu, in any language. It doesn't matter. And even in the prayer itself and in your sujood, it is permissible to invoke Allah in your mother tongue. The best dua on Laylatul Qadr, number one, which we all know, simple, and you can memorize it even if you're non-Arab. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. We're done with this. Then the second best is to invoke Allah from your heart. And that would require you to perfectly understand the meaning of your words and ponder over your supplication. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Dean from Netherlands, Assalamu Alaikum. Faizan from the USA, try again, Dean, please. Faizan. Assalamu Alaikum, Sheikh. Wa Alaikum Salam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Sheikh, I have two questions I want to ask you. Okay. Uh, the first question is that I'm running a social media service providing company online on Instagram. Uh, there are services online where you can buy followers, likes, views, extra. And I resell these services and earn money. I also collab with a YouTube promotion service provider where I resell their services. Mm. Uh, is this halal earning? Because I've searched uh, for this, whether it's legal or illegal, to these followers and stuff, and they say it's legal. And also, these followers uh, are mostly fake ones. They are, might be real. I, I'm, I'm completely honest with my clients that, that I'm telling them they are, that they are fake. Okay. That's my first question. My second question, I have a non-Muslim uh, friend, uh, and we were, we were just arguing about the, uh, the worshipping of idols. And he said, if, if Muslims are not worshipping idols, then why... Are they like wash, uh, praying or worshiping to uh, Mecca? Like I told him, it's, it's Muslim aren't worshiping Mecca, but it. Okay. Well, you can, if I you can just open the Quran where it says, فَأَيْنَ مَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ And also says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ والمغرب ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والنبيين والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال The ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah which indicates that facing the direction of the Qibla is a divine instruction based on what Allah willed and it does not mean that we're worshiping the Qibla nor worshiping the Kaaba Rather, piety or righteousness is man amana billahi, to believe in the oneness of Allah. Wal malaikati, and to believe that Allah has created angels for nur. La ya'asoon Allah ma amarahum ma yafa'aloon ma yu'maroon. Al yawm al akhir, the year after the articles of faith, you know. So the Quran itself answered this question. The worship utmost form is invocation. So when non-Muslims, let's say Christians in the church, they kneel before a statue and they pray and they invoke the statue. That's called what? Worship, right? And they ask from the statue, whether of Mary or Jesus, that is called worship. Muslims do not do that to other than the Almighty Allah. When we stand before Prophet Muhammad, we don't ask from him. When we go to his mosque, we ask from Allah. When we go to the Kaaba, we say, Oh Allah, while we are performing tawaf, while we are facing the Qibla, 
or even even if I'm sitting my back and resting against one of the poles and the qibla to my rear my dua is accepted it's recommended to be facing the direction that Allah the Almighty prescribed and the greatest proof to that is before facing the Kaaba Muslims and for uh, almost 15 years exactly 14 years and seven months were not even facing the Kaaba guess what they were facing Baytul Maqdis in Palestine so Allah says المغرب, to Allah belongs the east and the west if he says face this or face that it's his decision but we worship him not the direction okay Faizan and as far as I'm not sure if you're still online let's take Dean from Netherlands Assalamu Alaikum Assalamu Alaikum Sheikh Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh um, Sheikh what are the sunan to do uh, in the night time at the night time Jazakallah khairan Jazana wa iyakum thank you let's begin from the scratch we said the night begins at Maghrib so I pray Maghrib, then Sunnah after Maghrib. And then I pray Isha, then it's Sunnah after Isha, two rakahs. And there is a prayer which is recommended to pray eight rakahs or as many rakahs as you can between Maghrib and Isha, if you want to. And then after Isha, until dawn or until Fajr, any prayer you offer after Isha is known as Qiyamul Layl. Qiyam means standing in prayer. Layl means night. So in Surah Al-Isra, we hear Allah the Almighty saying, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدَ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا Any part of the night, go ahead and stand up and pray. How many rak'ahs? As many rak'ahs as you can afford. How long? How short? Again, based on your affordability. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whether Ramadan or before or after Ramadan, he used to normally pray, eight rakahs but long rakahs two by two then he will pray the witch thank you dean from the netherland benjamin from the uk assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam uh, how, how are you doing sheikh i'm doing great alhamdulillah benjamin and you alhamdulillah i'm doing good alhamdulillah so is it permissible to keep the name bin yamin as i've heard i've been in the middle east and some say that my name is not permissible to keep and it's a bad name yes it is permissible to keep not a problem it is the name of prophet yusuf's brother okay so it is okay to keep it no. uh, faria from the ksa assalamu alaikum um, my, my question is regarding zakah. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to know, I understand that a husband does not uh, have to pay his wife's zakah if he doesn't want to. So I have been gifted some jewelry, but I'm in, unemployed, so I'm unable to pay my zakah. So is it okay if my father pays for it? Because I would rather give it back to him so that, like, so that he can pay for the zakah like he has been paying for it when my mother had it or if i must pay it then i'll get no, rid of it like faria, i would rather not sell it sister faria whoever is willing to pay on your behalf he's doing you a favor and it is permissible your dad your brother your son uh, your husband no problem what matters is the right of the poor will be delivered okay barakallahu feek well, brothers and sisters, I believe we did answer all the questions and we also ran out of time, so we will not be able to take further calls. But as you know that throughout the whole month of Ramadan, mashallah, we go live every day, except only on Fridays. We'll give you a day off and we will continue doing so, inshallah, until the end of Ramadan, every day, 5 p.m. Mecca time. That is 3 p.m. UK time, GMT. Barakallahu feekum, aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank
صدق الله